Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Protests and corruption scandals continue to rattle Brazil. Just last week, another major scandal was uncovered when it was found that Brazil, the second largest exporter of meat in the world, had been exporting tainted meat. Apparently, this had been happening for a while. Producers figured it was cheaper to bribe meat inspectors than to pay for more sanitary production facilities. Meanwhile, over a million Brazilians took to the streets last week to protest against conservative government of Michel Temer to voice their opposition to pension law reform and social safety cuts by way of austerity measures. Some were even occupying the Ministry of Finance building in Brasilia. Also, Brazilians continue to wait for the next set of indictments against corrupt politicians, which is due at any moment. Joining us now from Florianapolis, Brazil, to discuss all of this is Mike Fox. Mike is a freelance journalist currently based in Brazil. Thank you for joining us today, Mike. Thank you, Sharmini. So, Mike, let's go through all of these developments uh, one at a time. First, perhaps the most recent uh, development is the meat scandal that people in Brazil and outside of Brazil are worried about. Tell us about the scandal, what happened, who's responsible, and how deep is this problem? So, um, the investigation has been going on for some time. Like you said, Sharmini, uh, bribes were paid to meat inspectors to certify meat. Uh, that had been tainted. Tainted uh, was meat that was going bad. In a lot of cases, they used chemicals to make it smell or look as if it was okay. In, uh, in some other cases, and there's actually jokes happening all around Brazil because they have to make jokes of everything, uh, of, of using um, cardboard around the meat in order to, 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 to beef it up uh, and make it look that it's okay. Um, fascinating. Some of the interesting things here, some of the major parties that have been Kind of hit with the scandal is again it's the PMDB party which is Temer's own uh, political party of course Temer is the the current Brazilian president he was the vice president under Dilma and he came to power uh, with the coup that happened last year so his party has been one of the major ones uh, that has been kind of caught up in this for accepting bribes the other one is the progressive party kind of a smaller party also conservative uh, allied with the PMDB I think one important thing uh, that we need to keep in mind here, and it's, and it's important to understand kind of the larger image of what's happening and what is corruption in Brazil. So <clears throat> the current Minister of Justice, the current Minister of Justice was just placed into uh, this position like a week or two ago, and he's been caught up in this scandal because before of this, he was a congressional representative in the state of Paraná, which is where the scandal uh, has been based. It's been around the country, but that's one of the major points uh, and apparently he was involved in kind of this bribing scheme with the Minister of Agriculture uh, in, in, in years past. So it just shows the level of corruption uh, that the PMDB and, and, and this new Minister of Justice, obviously also with the, with the PMDB, that is involved here. So he came from Paraná. He was involved in helping to push this, this bribery scheme, uh, in order to taint the meat industry. And, uh, and now he's the Minister of Justice. He hasn't said he's going to step down just yet. Uh, but that's kind of the latest to come out of that. Mike, uh, as we know, millions of people were protesting in Brazil against austerity measures, various cuts to Social Security and uh, pensions and, and so on. Uh, but are Brazilians just as aware of how deep these corruption scandals are running, you know, from the car wash to the now the meat scandal and how it all ends up in terms of uh, the political legislators? People are aware. Uh, I think one of the big things was last year's the, the whole, whole coup process really woke people up to a lot of ways of just the tainted political system in Brazil. Of course, people understand corruption as a way of life here, right? It's not just uh, on a political level, uh, the local parallels what's happening in politics uh, on the national scale. And so people understand it. Uh, it just runs through you know people's lives. They see it on television and they just understand it in their own neighborhoods. Um, but the level of it, it just keeps coming. There was a new scandal that just broke today, actually, from Rio de Janeiro, where Supreme Court justices in Rio de Janeiro have been, have been, have been caught up in, in something else. So yeah, it just keeps uh, happening. I think the propaganda around this, and I think this is something important for your audience to understand about what's happening in Brazil. 
so the corruption is particularly within, within Congress is huge, right? When, when Dilma was taken out of office last year, two-thirds of the Senate in the Congress that voted for, for, for her to be taken out um, are themselves under investigations for crimes and corruptions and whatever else. Um, and so this is kind of endemic within this system. Um, but the propaganda that we've seen against this uh, has been something else. Temer, right, the Temer government, which I think we've had six people or over six people that have stepped down since uh, he came to power like early, you know, la the last spring sometime uh, because of so many people got getting caught up with corruptions that has to do with the Lava Jato scandal or this or that. Uh, and Temer is now paying very large sums of money for one of the, the biggest propaganda campaigns they've had in a really long time. So I think that's an important thing to understand that in terms of the political system, the government is really trying to push this. The media is also playing these games. So it's always spinning the corruption as if it's coming from the Workers' Party, as if it's coming from Lula, as if it's coming from uh, the, the PT and the left. So although people understand kind of what's happening, what you see if you've turned on Global, uh, which is kind of the main television station, what you see if you're reading Beja, is that things are looking up, the economy is looking better. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, and really the people that have been blamed, that are blamed for this current moment, needs to be Lula and the PT. And it's the exact opposite is what, is, is what the reality is. Now the PT, of course, there was corruption happening. There was corruption uh, under, under the Lula administration and under, under Dilma when, 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 when the PT was in power. But that was happening within the larger political system. There were the, the PMDB and several other parties were even more corrupt at the same time. Uh, and so what we're hearing, what you hear when you watch the news, uh, is the PT, 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 and that Lula, Lula is bad. Why is that happening? Because the, the, the next elections are in 2018. Temer cannot run again because of his own corruption scandals against them. So he cannot actually be elected for office, and yet he's the president. Now, Michael, yet he's the front runner when it comes to most polls in terms of who might win the 2018 elections. Exactly. So he still has a very large approval rate. He's charismatic. People like Lula. The PT, as you know, last year lost big in the local and regional elections. Bad. But Lula still, because of who he is and the image that he carries, uh, he still ha carries a lot of weight, and people really have a lot of hope for him next year. And that's why um, the idea of tarnishing Lula, tarnished, continuing to tarnish the PT, and linking him to whatever corruption is possible, and even if they can't link him to, to corruption, trying to make it seem in the minds of people that he is linked to corruption. And that's what we're really seeing in the mainstream media. That's what we're seeing in the government, uh, is that trying to really take Lula out as a possible front runner, as a possible candidate next year. Uh, we saw this the very first time that he was asked to appear before the Lava Jato, before the Petrobras investigations. They showed up at his house with hundreds and hundreds of, 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 of security guards to take him into the car as if he was being arrested. Uh, he was home within a couple of hours. It was a normal, it was a routine questioning that happened to a lot of people, but they really played that one up as if he was already charged and investigated and responsible. And it is taking its toll. It's taking an impact. Uh, but he's still the front runner, and people still really care a lot about him. And yet uh, the actual legislators who <coughs> impeached uh, um, Dilma Rousseff, uh, ha apparently half of them are under investigation or, char or charged with corruption scandals. And at the moment, I understand they've actually introduced a bill, an uh, amnesty for the corrupt uh, politicians uh, uh, governing and where is that at and, and uh, what's the update? Obviously with the amount of people that uh, are under investigation for corruption uh, and briberies in the Congress and the Senate themselves, they, they, they love the idea of passing an amnesty law in which they're not going to get caught up in that, right? Uh, the big push right now, it started in last November and although they, they, they most likely had the support for it, they pulled uh, things from consideration just because there was so, the public had, had such a large outcry against this. You know, how do you give amnesty to, to, to corruption and bribery charges, right? Uh, the big push right now, which they've started to talk about again, uh, and I'm sure that deals are being made in back doors right now, is kind of the push for, to amnesty Kaisha Dois. Kaisha Dois, or, or the, the second box, is a type of bribery where businesses will pay uh, undeclared sums of money under the table uh, to corrupt politicians or to politicians. Uh, then they have, they obviously, once those politicians are back in office, they get the kick kickbacks uh, or their companies will get, uh, you know, support from those different politicians or inflated contracts. So that's kind of 
That's what that's the specific type of bribery and corruption that they're talking about trying to give amnesty to. The reason, the, the excuse that they're using is that there's no legislation that actually uh, oversees Kaisha uh, Dois. There's no legislation that oversees this type of, of corruption or bribery, which is true. It's, it falls under legislation in other areas. Now, the more leftist uh, legislators, the PESOL, obviously, and also, and also members of the PT have said, well, yeah, we need legislation that's going to identify Kaisha Dois and that's going to be able to explain what it is and and, and, and deal with it, but that doesn't, we don't have to do an amnesty for it. That doesn't mean we, need, we legalize just campaign contributions under the table. Uh, and so that's kind of the, the debate that's happening right now. Obviously, in the, in, in, in the public, the Brazilian public is, isn't in favor of this at all. You know, the, the major marches, both against Dilma uh, by the right and also for Dilma, have, always, have, have always been against corruption. And, 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 and the left obviously knows that the corruption led to really the, the impeachment uh, against Dilma, not because she was corrupt. She was one of the few people that wasn't corrupt, but because so many people could get on board be, behind taking her out. Um, but so that's kind of the, the latest place where things stand. Right. Mike, finally, um, let's talk about the growing social <coughs> unrest and the demonstrations. I mean, last week, a million people marched against the Temer government and his cuts to Social Security and, uh, and so on. But uh, how deep is that social movement and is it going to be continuing to mobilize over the coming months against corruption and the Temer government? Charmini, I think that's the million dollar question right now. This month, people are really excited. Uh, you can see it uh, from social movements, you can see it from kind of the left on their blogs, that people are really excited about what happened, particularly like you said, over a million people marched on March uh, 15th, uh, over 100,000 in Sao Paulo. We're talking in, in major cities all around the country. I was in the marches here in Florianópolis, which is the capital of Santa Catarina. Uh, and, and there was members of the social movements, MST, there was labor unions, uh, and it was a really exciting march. You can really feel this kind of movement that's happening. Uh, when I was speaking with members of the social movements last year, right around the time of the coup, they were saying that for the first time uh, in, this was the most organized the left had been in roughly 50 years, since, say, the 1964 coup, and they're organizing against that. And there was kind of a lull for a little bit, but people really feel like, like things are, 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 are back on track, and they feel really excited about the momentum that's been built from March 15th. There's another March plan on this Friday. Uh, some people are calling it a general strike. And then there's another one that unions just a couple days ago, nine different central labor unions signed on uh, to support a, a major strike around the country on April 28th. So these things are happening, and you can kind of you know, feel this movement that's kind of growing. And this is all against, like you said, the, uh, the pension Social Security reforms. This thing is, is, is pretty draconian. Uh, they're talking about increasing the, the legal retirement age by many years, up to 65, which is used you know, for people in the United States. You might say 65, that's not a big deal. But actually, the life expectancy in Brazil is five years lower than it is in the States. And Brazil, the social safety net has always been really, really concrete. People before women could retire at age 40 or 45 after putting 20 years into uh, service, and men could retire after 25 years at age of 45 or 50. So we're talking about increasing this by you know, an extensive amount, as, as well as several other things that are mixed into this bill, and, and labor is not happening. So that's one really exciting thing that's happening. Uh, we'll see what happens about that in, in, the, in the coming days and the weeks to come. I do want to just add one really important detail that's really key at this moment. So that happened, this was uh, March 15th, just this last Sunday, just a couple days ago, the right-wing uh, grassroots Tea Party style movements tried to turn people out in the streets. They said they were going to have 100,000 people out in the streets in Sao Paulo. They said in major cities, watch out. Now these were the movements uh, come to the streets in the Brazil free movement. These were the people that turned out hundreds of thousands against Dilma. And literally this last Sunday, there was no one in the streets. There was, in some cases, a couple thousand, a couple hundred, but nothing compared to what we saw on March 15th. And it gets really telling in terms of the shifting momentum of kind of where the movement is on the grassroots and how people are seeing this political system and how upset they're about it and who they're willing to support. Because even those people that, you know, the, the kind of the right-wing Tea Party folks aren't going to come out uh, against these 
the, the social reforms, and that's not what they were protesting. They were really kind of coming out to protest in, in, in favor of, of the, of the Temer government, what's not, and right. people were not having it. So I think that's really a, a, key, a key point there. Right. And Mike, uh, while the momentum and mobilization <coughs> has really been uh, incrementally growing uh, in Brazil since, uh, I would say, the, uh, uh, the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff, but uh, the repression and suppression of those movements are also going on. I mean, this week we saw the assassination of one of the MST uh, members or previous members of the MST. Um, and and, uh, and we've seen continued arrests and suppression of uh, dissent going on as well. Give us some sense of um, how deep that runs. Yeah, I mean, it's deep. You know, the repression continues. Impunity in Brazil is terrible. So when you have a murder like that that happened in the Pará state against the, the member in the MST, where literally he had just had assassination against Tim, against him, he was in the hospital, and they charged into the hospital and killed him point blank in the hospital. There, th these types of things go happen day in and day out, and so few people are actually held responsible for it. And just to, just to tie this back to what we were talking uh, about with the meat scandal, the now Minister of Justice uh, is the same person who was responsible for, who, who was tagged up in this meat scandal. The, so, and he's, he, I think he was in, in power for just a couple of days before the meat scandal happened. The previous Minister of Justice, uh, was this guy who had called the MST literally guerrillas, uh, extremely right-wing. He is now a member of the Supreme Court because he was moved to the Supreme Court after the one Supreme Court judge who was really pushing investigations to the Lava Jato case, and particularly into the right, was killed in a plane crash in January. So these are the maneuvers that are happening. Uh, the repression continues. Social movements know it. They feel it. It's ongoing. It's been ongoing for a long time. Uh, but I think we've, we've seen it tick up under, under Temer. Uh, so, you know, the protests are going to continue, and I think we can expect to see, you know, growing and increasing repression around the country. All right, Mike, I thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to reports from you on a more regular basis. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me, Sharmi. Take care. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.